Hello everyone. A lot of people have been asking me to do book reading of my uh, new book, The Book of Life. Uh, I'm really surprised and I am really grateful that you have liked it. This book is nothing but all those uh, lessons I learned from the great Hindu philosophy. I've just tried to put them in very simple language and it's uh, for everybody, it's not that it's only for young people or old people, it's for anybody who just wants to uh, understand and know another perspective of the same concepts like truth, fear, courage, purpose, meaning of life, spirituality, career, um, because there is there are generally set two or three stories around them which the motivational speakers and inspirational leaders uh, generally uh, propagate and we think that success is either this or that so I have tried to since Hindu philosophy is so rich it's so multi-dimensional when it comes to explaining or interpreting things uh, complex concepts of life and what they try to do is uh, tell you the truth in such a manner that it helps you inquire and discover your own truth and your con own concepts and theories of life. So I will, as you have desired, I'll just uh, read one small chapter. Chapter number eight from this book. Are you a victim of awesome mediocrity? Have you ever thought about this concept, awesome mediocrity? Okay, so here we go. Are you a victim of awesome mediocrity? Ever since algorithm became the new god, humans have created a template for what we should eat, how much should we exercise, and how we should look like in order to belong to the successful club. This is what I call awesome mediocrity. This cultural glorification of bodies with minimal fat and visibly toned muscles an aerobicized midriffs has turned health maintenance into a psychological pandemic. The deadly diet culture is slowly killing people's self-esteem and making them inhumanly competitive with their own self, participating in an invisible, never-ending race to belong to the awesome mediocrity club. There is endless information out there about what to eat, how much, how much sleep one needs, how much physical activity to get and how much money to save. It's great to educate yourself, but information from the outside world cannot replace information from your inside world. We all have internal cues that tell us when we feel tired, hungry, thirsty or restless, isn't it? We know when we need a hug, when to make love, and when we need to be alone. Isn't it true? If you have to depend on a fitness tracker, a heart rate monitor, or a pedometer to know how much to walk or calorie or a calorie counter to know when to stop eating, perhaps you are out of touch with your body's cues, and this is a very bad news. Pay attention to how your breath moves in and out. Feel your heartbeat and notice whether you feel tired, energized or ready to turn around. Remember, enough is not a number, it's a feeling. Whether or not you exercise is nobody else's business but your own. Love your body, not the health apps. Learn from your own body, not Google. Listen to your inner voice, not YouTube videos. Feel awesome, be awesome for yourself, not in order to fit into the awesome mediocrity club. Remember, membership to this club comes at a price and that is your own awesomeness. So friends, this book has, as I told you, around 47 chapters and each chapter is just one 
one and a half page or two pages and it's a great read very simple read i have deliberately written it in a very simple small sentences simple language and the inspiration behind this book is advaita philosophy of hinduism if you want this book you can write at vivekagnyotri.com and you will get a signed copy signed by me an author signed copy as your collection thank you for reading